everyone. Welcome back to AMTV. I'm Topher Morrison. In our first news piece today, geopolitics. What is Russia doing? What is made of 160,000 troops, 130 bombers, 70 battleships, and thousands of tanks and armored vehicles? It's not Voltron. It's Russian President Vladimir Putin's ego or a really lucid flashback of his KGB days. Who knows, it could be both, but for our purposes, we'll just call it what they're saying it is. A two-front war game right off the heels of an unannounced war game in March that some alleged was in response to Russian wealth being appropriated or bailed in from Cyprus, you remember that? And all to placate European institutional investors. Some saw it as a sort of try it again in the face of NATO might. So, Western flank, check. This week, it's the largest game since the Soviet era, taking place off the heels of the largest joint games in history between China and Russia, begging the question, what's up with all of the games? Russian forces are in Siberia and in the Pacific, purportedly to test defensive capabilities against a Japanese U.S. attack. East Coast, check. But some are suggesting that it's actually to remind China the bear is bigger than the dragon. Who knows? What is clear is Russia is selling more weapons abroad than ever, record profits, so it could be a product demonstration. Russian strategic bombers have also buzzed American airspace twice this year. And just yesterday, Japan scrambled fighters to intercept Russian jets in their airspace. Russia is also concerned about its interests in Syria. Reports have shown that most, if not all, of its personnel have evacuated that area. Obama has now, as we all know, been funding the Rebel Alliance, most of which is all Islamic extremists. Some additional insight comes from Paul Joseph Watson of InfoWars, as he notes Israel's bombing of Russian-made weapons could be an answer. And it highlights the disparity of growth of Russia's military expenditures relative to the United States. He also mentions the fact that Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev called on Russian defense industry to provide, quote, state-of-the-art weapons superior to their Western analogs, which includes nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles called YARS-M, which according to Russian officials will be able to penetrate U.S. missile defenses. The ultimate question is, is Putin responding to U.S. rebalancing eastward? Think NATO and New Zealand, U.S. Marines in Australia, the persistent presence of U.S. troops in Japan, and also a four-star general in South Korea commanding all of their troops and ours as well. 28,000 strong. These all need to be taken into account, or it could just be Russia flexing its muscles like good old times. And given the last 10 years of the war on terror, I bet you a lot of people are wishing for those times as well. Capturing every quarter of the alternative media, watch AMTV News Monday through Friday. Got a tip or an interesting news clip? Shoot me an email at Morrison at amtvmedia.com. Follow me on Twitter at AMTV News and like me on Facebook at The Real Topher Morrison. Find my source material and more videos like these at AMTV Media and Greenwave.com. Both are part of the AMTV network. This is AMTV News, the voice of independence.